Hello guys and welcome back to 737 Sim here in Brunei. Into the sim we go. Okay, I've got the pedestal moved to the side because I don't have any J-rails. It's very hard to get in with it out of the way. We've got pre feed loaded up. And if you haven't seen it, this is what the 365 inch TVs look like. And here we are, I'm sat in the front of my cockpit and today's job is just behind the control column here. And that is the tiller mechanism is just a fake one and I actually need it to work because driving around the taxiways is a bit difficult with the pedals. You can see that it just falls over and that's because it's not even attached, it's just with a six mil bolt. I've designed the new mechanism in Fusion. Let's head out to the workshop. They're all printed. Let's build it, let's get it fitted and let's get it tested. We're out here in the workshop and that's because the 3D printer has been moved out here to keep the noise down. The tiller arm was printed with 25% infill and due to the stress loadings on all the other parts in front of me here, all these were printed at 100% infill to try and maximize their strength. So when it comes to creating the tiller mechanism, we don't actually need that many parts. We've got a few countersunk screws of different lengths. We've got a high quality pot here and we've got a 50 millimeter length expansion spring. I nearly said compression. It's definitely expansion spring and it's the strongest one I could find for its size. Running through the 3D printed parts, we've got the actuator cam and shaft in red. We've got the base plate in black. The operating tongues in green. The top plate in gray and the pot cap in red. The only reason these are a different color is just to show you the different parts. They can all be done in one color because in fact, you're probably not even gonna see this mechanism because it's on the outside of the cockpit with only the shaft and the tiller arm protruding. So first up is the base and the shaft. They simply just push together like so. We've got our top plate, which then goes on top of the shaft and we line the holes. Now I can't remember if I mentioned this before, but all the screws I'm using today are four millimeter in size and they're all countersunk because they need to be below the surface so nothing interferes. Next up are the tongues in green and they just slot over the two studs and they're part of the centering mechanism. I'm gonna put that down for a second and insert the pot into the pot cap. So that's going to go on like that. I want the wires facing down. So the idea now that we've got the pot and the pot cap is let's just kind of try and center the pot shaft in the middle. That looks good there. And the pot shaft is designed to be a tight fit into the center of the shaft and it has to go over these three locating studs here. So we've got the shorter of the three screws going in the long stud. Now that's because there's not much stress on this stud. Whereas the two studs at the rear here, have got the pivot points for the tongs and we actually want to put them into the top plate all the way through. So it's not the plastic taking the strain, it's actually the stud inside. Make sure there's no interference on the tongs, nice and clear. Now we get to fit our spring over to the tongue studs. Yeah. And there's no way I can get enough force onto that shaft with my hands to be able to turn it. So before I solder the wires to the pot and they get in the way of everything, let me show you how this mechanism works. So we've got the centering arm in the center. When we move the tiller, it moves the tongs left and right and it's the spring that returns it back to the center position. And it's got a really firm return to center position, which is great. Before I head inside, let's attach some wires and get this thing connected. So there's one bit I haven't shown you 
And in the 3D file, if you download these plans, is the drill plate guide. This is the exact same dimensions as the base plate. It's got three holes in, four millimeters in diameter of the exact centers of where they need to be drilled into the sidewall. The center shaft is there for the pilot hole and that's the center of the 18 mil bit spade bit that I'm about to use to drill the big hole for the shaft. Let's head inside and see how it goes. So here we are inside the cockpit. Here's the captain's side wall and I'm going to place our drill guide into position and pilot drill the three holes. I've just created the tiller decal on the printer. Now, to get it really black, I could have done with it with a laser jet. I don't have that, I've got a standard inkjet and it's on sound adhesive backing. So it's basically a sticker and hopefully I can separate the two without damaging the decal. He says, oh, it's cool, that's good. Now I've got to try and get this in the right position. And that just leaves the tiller arm to go on. And it's got quite a bit of force. This should look quite good taxiing around the runway. From this position, it's probably a bit hard to tell. Down here is the captain's side wall. This is the captain's left hand screen, the back of. I've got my Leopold in the card. It's going to be the only input in this card. And it's going to be on the x-axis. Plenty of cable length when I have to wire it in properly. Here is the captain's USB hub. An exceptionally long USB cable, which it really doesn't need to be that long. But as this is just prototyping, we can come back and tidy it up. There's the sound of the Leo Bodner card connecting. I'm sat back in the captain's seat. I've minimized prepar 3 d for a couple of minutes and we're now going to enter ProSim config. We're going to try and program the tiller via this rather than FSUIPC. If this doesn't work, then I'll switch to FSUIPC. Enter ProSim config. Because I've got three screens, I need to drag it across. Hopefully you guys can see it. Yes, you can. And we're going to go into combine config. It's going to be flight controls. I'm going to scroll down to lever. Hopefully it's not going to crash on me. And if I remember right, the tiller is actually quite far down the list. Let's have a look. Where are we at? Can't quite see elevator, rudder, tiller first offset, captain's is next. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the tiller and it's telling me that it is the Leo Bodner card x-axis. So hopefully what I've got to do is find it in the list and we're there. I'm going to set the center point. Let's set null zone as well. That's better. Uh, I didn't want to do that. Good. Null zone is there. Got a bit of twitch on there. Might have to fit a capacitor to the Leo Bodner board. Let's go up is full left. So we're going to set max left. Set full right. Oh, it really has got a bit of a twitch. Oh, we'll see how what happens. I'm going to click OK. That's going to restart the whole sim. Ah, rubbish. Okay, let's bring Prepar 3D back up. 
give me two minutes while I get the whole cockpit set back up because it's gone cold and dark and we need to get the engines running to be able to taxi. Parking brake off. No, oh, we're not moving, that's good. I'm going to increase the throttles ever so slightly. There we go. Well, the tiller's working. I can tell it's working already. Off to the left we go. Oh, that's fantastic. Now, if you're wondering why the nose is dipping, I'm using the parking brake as the brake, because I've not programmed the pedals yet. Well, that's a lie, I have programmed the pedals, but they're not working for some reason. I'm really not quite sure what's going on with Prepar 3D. It's been looking like 1980s graphics for the last week and all of a sudden it's looking like this which I mean it's fantastic there's no blockiness I mean the aircraft are actually round they've got rounded edges just run over the taxi sign so at low speeds the tiller actually is very effective I mean I'm sure we can do pretty much a spot turn there we go. Just ignore that aircraft that we crashed into. But for low speed maneuvers, the tiller is the way ahead. Okay, let's head out back out to the runway. I think I'm gonna call that to the end of the video this one. We've got the tiller working, it's what my main name was. Next is to sort out this yoke. I really need it to south center and to have a bit of feel. It's just not strong enough. I hope you can't see that I'm running over the, uh, the taxi signs. Uh, yeah, it's just not strong enough. There's no feel to it. It feels absolutely awful, if I'm perfectly honest. And uh, I'm probably gonna use the same kind of centering device as I've used for the tiller but for the, the control column. Got a few ideas up here to do. Oh, we're back on the runway. Can I get around quick enough? Let's apply the, uh, the parking brake. It's the only brake I've got. Oh, beautiful. Comes to a halt. Right, a heavy nose down. As I said guys, I think I'm going to call it an end to the episode here. I've achieved what I wanted to. Let's try and keep this video short. I always say I want to keep the video short. It never happens. However, it was a quick fix. It was a quick make. It works exceptionally well. I've got a, I'm really pleased with it actually. It's, it's one of the best controls in here. I would say the throttle unit was, but that's letting me down at the moment. Next up will be the get the yoke sorted, that I've, again, I've seen firmer slugs than that. For the time being guys, I'll catch you later, sim out.